Born in Butte and a product of Helena Capital High School, former Carroll College All-American quarterback Paul Petrino played for his father there for the Fighting Saints. And just like dad, getting into the coaching ranks where right here at the University of Idaho, he's a defending Sunbelt Conference Coach of the Year. We came in here and, and uh, the program wasn't doing real great when we got here, but we believed in what we believed in. We, we set a foundation. Um, I think we had a lot of we had to have a lot of private victories before we got the public victories. One of the first things we had to do is clean up everything academically. Then we just got a little bit better each year, you know, and our kids really uh, learned how to work, learned how to grind, uh, learned how to be tough. Really going into last season, we all expected to make a bowl game, you know, and I don't think anyone outside of this building did, but our players and coaching staff really believed it. The guys really, you just saw them starting to get a little bit more a little bit more confidence, a little bit more swagger about them as the games went on, and then and then won six of our last seven and had a great bowl game and scored more points than anybody in the country in our bowl game. And it just made it a lot of fun because we put in a lot of hard work, and it, it took probably one more year than, than you hoped, but uh, sure made it worth it when uh, you knew where we started and where we got to, so now we just got to keep it going. Notice the smile creeping across the defending Sunbelt Conference Coach of the Year's face as he reminisces that bowl victory the culmination of four years of exhausting preps and strategy. But the expression also vanishes as quickly as it appeared, as Petrino's attention turns back to business, a routine he admittedly inherited from his father. I probably, probably my biggest mentors were, you know, started with Coach Tuss in high school and then definitely my dad and my brother, because I coached my brother forever too, and John L. Smith. And so I think they'd see a little bit of, a little bit of everybody, but probably mostly my brother and my dad, um, probably, the way I fly around and my motivation and that that's a lot more like my my dad and then the way I try to game plan and attack people um, defensively is probably more like my brother but I hope they see something of any of them because they're all great coaches so <laughs> I hope they see something of of any of those guys I mentioned. Paul Petrino has certainly landed himself in that list of great mentors in the family tree. The Petrino name can be found on numerous coaching staffs at all levels. Bobby, of course, is the head coach at Louisville and one of the top paid coaches in the country. Jason enters his second year as head football coach of Rocky Mountain College with younger brother Jared on the staff. And Michael is a second year assistant with the University of Montana women's basketball program. What began with Bob Petrino Sr. some 50 years ago has spread to nearly every branch of the family tree. We got a dentist in Missoula, Joey. Joey's a dentist. Um, but no, pre predominantly it's pretty much coaches. Uh, but that's kind of what everybody grew up being around and understanding. And uh, I got three sisters that are all good teachers, but they're still all educators. You know, we're still all teachers. You know, that's that's what you're doing as a coach and you're teaching. So it's kind of what we all were, were raised to do and, and what we do. As mentioned, the Petrino coaching tree now branches to the sisters' sides of the family. Kelly's husband, Mark Sampson, served as head coach at Helena Capital, MSU Northern Haver High, and now Great Falls High, while their son Kyle, Paul's nephew, recently began his second season at Kalispell Flathead, sharing that tutelage he learned from dad, uncles, and grandpa Bob. When Petrino accepted this job in Idaho, it was an immediate benefit to the family and friends in the football coaching world back in Montana. Yeah, it is, and, and we had a lot of Montana teams in our camp this summer, so that was cool too. You know, we had we had Great Falls High with Mark and Kalispell, or excuse me, um, yeah, Flathead with Kyle, and then Helena High with Tony Arnston came out, so Libby came out, so it was, uh, it's always great, you know, Montana people are, are great people, and they're tough, you know, so that's probably why a lot of Montana people um, are such good football players and coaches, because it's just a tough state, and people grow up being tough. It was nearly 40 years ago, Bob Petrino Sr. recruited an offensive lineman by the name of Chris Sinkovich from Spokane Falls Community College. Initially just a piece to the roster puzzle for the eldest Petrino, Sinkovich would eventually become one of the closest and most important acquaintances to Bob, Bobby, and Paul. When I was putting together staff, more people that I could have uh, that, that I knew and that had been coached by my dad or coached for my dad or been around him, I was going to definitely try to get. Um, so I guess, you know, Coach Sink came with me right from the get-go. Um, he's kind of my right-hand guy. He, he does everything. He's our O-line coach, offensive coordinator, assistant head coach. Um, he, he's probably, he is the only guy that's actually coached for my dad, coached for my brother, and coached for myself. So um, he's, he's an unbelievable coach. Um, he's really somebody that helps me just bouncing ideas off of and, and getting different things. So that was, that was great to get. Coaches are a tight-knit group, and their world is all about trust. 
So it was no surprise to see Paul Petrino welcome Sinkovich to the staff with open arms. But that hire was nowhere near the end of his reach, back to his Treasure State days. Petrino grew up alongside another football junkie in Troy Purcell. Former Helena Capital, Carroll College running back, Purcell also went the coaching route, spreading many of the same disciplines he learned from Tuss and Bob Petrino Sr. But it wasn't until the conclusion of his fourth Montana High School State Championship, three of those at Bozeman, one at Haver High, that Purcell's path once again crossed with his old teammate. I tried to hire uh, Troy Purcell when I first got the job, but he just didn't. He, he wanted to finish out win a couple more state championships first at Bozeman because um, he knew he had really good teams coming up. I kind of kept trying to get him um, uh, for a couple times, and then we had an opening uh, before last season and got him here, and it was just great to get him. We grew up together. We went through, uh, you know, from grade school, junior high, both played together in high school, played together in college, and, uh, you know, I've just seen the unbelievable job he's done as a, as a head coach in high school. I knew it would be great to get him. He coached on defense his first year here, and now he's going to coach on offense this year because he's a great coach, great motivator. When I listen to him out there before practice, a lot of times I just think of my dad because he sounds a lot like him. So, you know, that's great to have him there. Throughout his coaching stops across the country, Petrino has always kept an eye on those former schools, Helena Capital and Carroll College. It was no surprise then when he reached out to another former Bruin standout, Bobby Daly, 2007 FCS All-American linebacker from Montana State. And Daly has quickly elevated from a graduate assistant to director of football operations and now runs full-time assistant coaching with the linebackers. The Vandals defensive staff also boasts a pair of former University of Montana assistants, Mike Bresky and Eric Williams, who served time Bresky with Joe Glenn, then Robin Flugrad some years later. Williams was one of the defensive backs coaches for Bresky in those latter years. Each of these assistants brings familiarity to Petrino's staff at Idaho, and each also offers the same intensity and focus as their head coach. So we got a lot of Montana ties. You kind of, you know, when you, even like when you talk about recruiting, you kind of recruit from friends and family, and when you're putting together a staff, you probably trust friends and family the most first. And, and uh, I'm really fortunate to have all those guys on our staff. They all, they all have a passion for football. That's probably the biggest thing that we all have in common. Um, everybody loves football, has a passion, good teachers, good motivators, and, and uh, we, just, we had a good time together last year, so it, it's fun to have that many guys around from, from the state of Montana. The Carroll College football program celebrated its 100th year in 2014, honoring coaches and athletes as far back as the Mount St. Charles College days. The Petrino name is a staple in the Fighting Saints history, sitting right there front and center with some of the best. Paul Petrino was arguably one of the greatest in the school's history, leading the Saints to four conference titles and a 36-6 record while playing for his father. An all-conference and all-American quarterback, he held 16 program records following those four years with the Fighting Saints, but says his fondest memories include the friends who enjoyed similar successes. It's a lot of the great players that I played with. You know, um, I was very fortunate. Um, had a bunch of really great players and fortunate to play with them. You know, we went four years, only lost two games in the regular season in four years. Had a lot of great wins. There, there was a lot of them that you remember. Uh, beating Central Washington when they were really supposed to whoop up on us the first round. My senior year, that was a lot of fun. Um, I think I carried the ball like 36 times. I could barely get out of bed the next day, but no, that, that was a great day. Homecoming, you always kind of played that game for your dad. So my senior year homecoming game, was cool, you know, because I knew it was the last one playing it for my dad, and and uh, we killed Tech, and I got National Player of the Week, so that was nice for for my dad right there, and, and just you know the great players that I was fortunate enough to play with, you know, the Bart Davies, the John Saunders, Mark Bigler, um, you know, you could go on and on, Larry Iverson. Um, we had a patched up line. That was probably something that you'll always remember. My sophomore year, um, we had a couple of JCO linemen that that decided not to come back after the summer. So my dad was coaching the O-line, and he moved John Saunders from defense to, to offensive lineman and to be an unbelievable great offensive lineman. Kenny Volk was a tight end. We moved him to guard. Um, we had uh, Dave Campbell playing inside. We had Doug Shell, that was a middle linebacker, came over and played guard. And we ended up leading the country in, in rushing offense that year. It really was a makeshift. They used, and my dad called it the patch-up O-line. Uh, but what they were was just a bunch of tough, get after it, give second effort guys. And, uh, that's definitely something that's, you know, and I'm probably, there's so many good players that I've played with, uh, you know, the Callens, 
um, Butch Boudreaux, those were guys in my class. Um, so th there was just a, a lot of good players that I was fortunate enough to play with. 30 years have passed since Petrino shed the playing shoes for a whistle and clipboard, but it's easy to see why success has followed his coaching career. The former quarterback can relate to what his players see on the field, but do they have any idea how decorated their head coach was back in his day? They probably don't care. You know, I think they just, they just, I think the biggest thing that players want is you to help them become better. You know, they, that's, and I think when you're a young coach, you, you worry about that and want them to, you know, that's when you're still probably trying to race them and stuff. But uh, I, I think the biggest thing is you just need to help them get better. And when you can teach them how to get better and show them how you can make them better, then they're going to respond and, and they'll work as hard as they can for you. Once you gain their trust and let them know that you're going to, you're going to help them become better players and give them a chance to be successful, then they'll do whatever you want them to do. No foot races against the team. Not now. I'm too, I'm too old now, but when I was young, I used to do it. At least he'll always have those days at Helena Capital, at Carroll College, and back home in Montana. Richie Melby, MTN Sports.